Reporters live it this week over the Supreme Court's decision, not all reporters, to take up the case on whether former President Trump can claim presidential immunity. The cravenness of the court is evident in what they are doing with the pacing here. It's a bad look for them. Yeah. It's a to, very to bad it? to have taken yeah. this. It is an unmistakable sign from the MAGA majority of the Trump created court that they are with him. And I am beyond terrified, Nicole, right now for our country. Right. I'm beyond <laughs> terrified, too. Give me a second. Life, Liberty, and a Levin host, Mark Levin, has a lot to say about this. Mark, great to see you. Your reaction to their reaction. Well, they get paid a lot of money for being stupid, don't they? Yes. Oh, they're very frightened. They're very concerned. The Supreme Court of the United States, they trash the Supreme Court. They're trashing the Constitution. They're cra trashing the office of the presidency. These prosecutors have cut due process corners. They're pushing to get these cases done before the election while they claim there's no election interference. And they're worried that Donald Trump might actually get his day in court. Well, let me tell you something, Brian. You know what this is? Of course you don't, but this is very, very big. You know what this is? This is the special counsel, her report, her, on Joe Biden. Exhibit after exhibit after exhibit of Joe Biden's felonies. Felonies under the Espionage Act when he was vice president, when he was a private citizen, and when he was a senator. So let me tell these knuckleheads something. If Donald Trump loses this post-presidential immunity case, you know what the next administration can do, including his, take the cover off this report, put an indictment cover on it, and indict Joe Biden, because they're not required to adhere to what Mr. Herr or what Mr. Garland have to say. The evidence against Joe Biden in the Espionage Act, there's scores, scores of examples of his committing felonies. And the only reason they didn't bring the case, they said, is because he's an imbecile. That was the bottom line. But there's enough probable cause in this document to bring hundreds of charges against Joe Biden, depending on the statute of limitations. So they better hope that Donald Trump wins these knuckleheads on these other networks, because if he doesn't, it's Joe Biden's day in court. That's number one. Number two, the Supreme Court justices ought not be pressured like this, and they need to understand something. This rogue prosecutor, Jack Smith, who's unconstitutionally appointed in violation of the Appointments Clause of the Constitution, this guy, he didn't charge Trump with insurrection. He didn't charge Trump with sedition, conspiracy, sedition, violence, none of it. He went digging, and he finds the 1871 Klan Act. He finds the Enron Act on obstruction, which was abused against many of the J6ers. He uses a federal contractor statute. Those are the statutes he uses, and he's telling the court, I should be able to indict Donald Trump for his official actions as president of the United States, not for any real crime, but I've got to go back to the post-Civil War Klan Act. I've got to go to the Enron Act. I've got to go to the Federal Contractors Act because I want to put him in prison with an Obama-appointed judge, right. with, a, with a jury that's going to be appointed from a population that supports Biden and hates Trump. So is the court really going to turn the power of the presidency and immunity inside out. I love these legal analysts. What do they say? This is too broad. This is a case of first impression. No president has ever been charged with a crime, let alone this Michigas after he's left office. All this talk about January 6th and overthrowing the government. Well, why don't they charge him with that? They have it. And so the bottom line is, when you read the indictments, when you see the arguments that are being made, the court should say, no. We're not going to destroy right. all these years of American history in order to accommodate Joe Biden, his campaign, and his right. prosecutor. So, so Mark, that's my answer and to that. I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself. You, you usually read everything, and I think to myself, I should have read everything. I actually read that whole thing over the course of a weekend. And there are times where he walks into the room with his ghostwriter, and he says, look, I have classified documents here. And you know where they were located. You saw the pictures in the report. He's got classified documents dating back to when Tito was running Yugoslavia. And people say, well, and focused on his says, mindset. He even says to the ghostwriter, they don't know I have these. I know. It's Did you read crazy. That line?
They don't know yeah. I have these. So that's a confession. Yeah. So a uh, man's yeah. guilty of numerous uh, I want, I want uh, see, espionage acts. I want to see if I can get to Hunter, by the way, because uh, we put out his 200-page transcript about 5.45 Eastern time last night, at which time he, they were focusing on the $3 million he got from China. And every time they got close to something that was uncomfortable, he said, I was drunk or I was high or I don't remember that. My dad was not involved. Here's a quote. I'm surprised my dad hasn't called me right now from this is one of these exchanges. Uh, and if he did, I would put him on speakerphone to say hi to you and to Congressman Raskin and everybody else in the room. It is nothing nefarious, literally. So there's at least 20 times when he had business deals going on, his dad either showed up or called in. But he says it's no big deal. That's why I pay a lawyer $2,000 an hour to prep you and work on you and how you should answer these. Look, it's just my dad. This is what families do. The fact that he's vice president of the United States and I'm on with some communist operative or the fact that I'm on with some Russian operative, the fact that I'm trying to milk these guys and these companies for five million, ten million, millions of millions of dollars, the fact that we set up these front organizations, wash the money through, the fact that the Treasury Department had over 150 red tags on these transactions, the fact that I didn't pay taxes on it, the fact, this is what families do. Don't you understand? And as for these phone calls, oh, I would put them on the speakerphone to speak to my buddy Raskin, who's a red, by the way. Speak to my buddy Raskin. That would be perfectly fine, really. Did you take Raskin to play golf with your dad and your business partners? Did you take Raskin to have dinner with your dad and your business partners? Did you take Raskin to have photos with your dad and your business partners? Did you take Raskin on that flight on Air Force Two with you? Raskin, who's a special pleader for everything and anything, Marxist, a Biden, Islamist, and so forth and so forth. So Raskin's a character witness for a guy, that is Hunter Biden, who slept with young prostitutes. I would think the women's groups would be upset, but AOC seems to be okay with yep. this. Who didn't pay his taxes, despite the fact that they pulled in over $30 million. I would think AOC would be upset that a rich guy didn't pay his taxes. He bought a gun illegally. I would think they'd be upset about that. Uh, he hasn't signed up as a foreign agent, despite all the foreign business. I would think they'd be upset about that. But the Democrat Party is corrupt. They don't care right. about the country at all. You know the Belt and Road Program was cr created to upend America's influence in developing countries around the world. He was doing a deal with one of the companies out to uh, upend America's influence, the CEFC company. He said, I only dealt with private business people. Does he not know they're directly affiliated with the federal government? And then when he said, well, didn't your dad meet with this guy? He goes, I don't remember that. Well, Rob Walker, one of your business partners, said he met with them. There's a little bit of a problem here. Now you know why they want to bring this case out to the public. I want to get to something else I know you're passionate about, and that's Israel. It seems the president's getting off the Israeli train, and he seems as though he's pushing them, number one, giving them forms to sign before they get our weapons, number one, and number two, pushing them towards a ceasefire. What do your sources tell you? My source is right here. It's in my brain. And I want to say this. The fact of the matter is that Joe Biden is throwing a lifeline to the Hamas Nazi terrorists. They're getting a motivation out of him. They're prolonging their war because of him. The fact is that Joe Biden paid for October 7th. Got that? He paid for October 7th. Iran was behind it. He paid for it. He's putting effectively sanctions on Israel, Israeli citizens, Israeli arms producers, including the Iron Dome. He's going to China and Russia at the UN to sanction Israel again. Meanwhile, he lifts all sanctions on Iran. Iran kills three of our uh, sailors. He does nothing to Iran. He hires a guy in Mali who's sympathetic to Iran. Uh, Blinken is sympathetic to Iran. They have an old ideology. They're demanding that that uh, they build a coalition in the Middle East and in Europe to force upon Israel a terrorist state on its border, uh, that they would, have to, they would have to grant this terrorist state their ancient homelands in Judea and Samaria where Judaism began. Joe Biden is a reckless, absolutely reckless reprobate. And when it comes to uh, Israel, the fact of the matter is he's got a problem. His party has massaged, created, and built an Islamist wing, represented by Talib, the River to the Sea crowd, the CAIR care crowd, the Hamas-funded crowd. He can't put them down in his mind because he needs their votes. He needs the vote of what? Islamists? Of people who want to exterminate Jews? Of people who want to eliminate Israel? You know, America? 
Sometimes there's good and there's evil. And when it comes to the border, when it comes to law enforcement, when it comes to supporting our military, when it comes to supporting Israel, Joe Biden is on the side of evil. And if it wasn't for Joe Biden, that war against Hamas would be over. What about the nukes, Joe? Iran's going to have seven nuclear weapons in the blink of an eye. You know who said that? The U.N. What are you doing about that, Joe? Rather than sanctioning Israel, which is the only country that's standing up to Iran, well, you're funding those bums. What are you going to do about the nukes, Joe? Nothing. Why aren't the Republicans asking him about the nukes? Ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine Iran with seven nuclear weapons? Right. They will own the Middle East. They will control all the oil flow. They will control navigable waters. It will affect us directly. They will blackmail us all the time. And Joe Biden's target is the Jews in Israel. Right. Think about how sick that is. Mark, I only have 30 seconds left, but the Republicans have to stand up for Ukraine weapons, and they have to stand up for Israel. Use the leverage on the border, do it. But this is a black and white issue. Final thought? My final thought is, and thank God you speak quickly so I have more time to speak. You, you know, I just it. want to point that Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, here is H.R. 2. This is the bill the Republicans passed. See it? And sent to the Senate and was killed 10 months ago. This was the bill that would have secured the border and forced Joe Biden to secure the border. The Sony, phony bipartisan bill had more loopholes than the Internal Revenue Code. That's why Biden keeps right. talking about it. He uses it as a fig leaf. Right. The fact of the matter is, Brian, we have more slavery in this country on the border now, sex slavery, women yep. slavery, children slavery, as a result of Joe Biden since the end of the Civil War. And apparently the Democrat right. Party is fine with it. Mark Levin, I'll watch him Saturday and Sunday, 8 o'clock. Thanks so much, Mark. Appreciate it. Always a uh, great time. Always interesting. God bless. Uh, I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.